this, that God says he will bring his fear back to this earth. Not, you know, human fear, but there's a scripture that says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And that scripture is in um, Ecclesiastes, I believe, the last chapter, the last verse that King Solomon wrote before his death. <clears throat> so, the fear of the Lord is something that we've lost in America, pretty much and probably the whole world. So, I can't think of any event that would bring the fear of the Lord more than, well, probably nuclear war would be even more horrific. But to be in gross darkness for three days and nights, that's going to cause people to, to fear God, I'll tell you that. They're going to realize there is a God in heaven because this is not going to be created by natural means, although he will use natural means, but he, God, will call the shots. He's the one that's going to put things in line, in place to bring this about. And you'll understand that when you watch my video entitled Urgent Details on the Three Days and Nights of Darkness. I think I'm going to and this, um, oh, I wanted to mention, no, I'm not. I'm going to mention one more thing. <clears throat> in the Bible, in the sixth chapter of Revelation, as far as I'm concerned, is a concise rundown of events that lead up to the uh, return of Christ. And one of them is the sixth seal where it says that there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of air and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree casts her figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And, listen to this part, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their place. The king's and the rich man said, you know, cry, cry on us or fall on us to the rocks of the mountains and so on. And they said, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who will be able to stand? And that's Revelation chapter 6 verse uh, 12 to 17. Revelation 6, 12 to 17. Some believers say this is speaking of what we're talking about, the three days and nights of gross darkness. Other believers say, no, that this is a future event, that there is a separate time period where three days and nights of darkness will occur at any time now and that in the future there will be another period of darkness because in this these verses it doesn't say anything about three days and three nights at all and when I studied this subject out for about a year and a half I also put a couple of videos out with a lot of scripture and I think that it's two separate time periods, but I'm not positive. And let's be honest, in Bible study, when we get into deep, deep subjects, sometimes we don't have all the answers. We do the best we can with the revelation that God has given. So, that's just a, a little addition, because somebody's going to look at these scriptures here. And they're going to say, oh, is that what this is? And I'm going to say, I'm not positive. But you study it. This is something you can do too. You've got one day, if this happens this Sunday, to study it in. But actually, you've had a couple of years. Because people have been putting prophecies out on the three days and nights of darkness for I uh, probably three, four maybe five years 
It's nothing that new. And I didn't start it. <laughs> now one last thought and then I think I'll go. This is another thing people are going to throw at me or throw at you. Linda, don't you know this is a Catholic prophecy? Don't you know that Padre Pio and other Catholic mystics um, many years ago received the same prophecy on the three days and nights of darkness. And Linda, you probably just stole that prophecy from them. You probably read it in Catholic books somewhere and you stole it and you put it on your YouTube. <laughs> and I'll say, you are crazy. You're completely nuts. And that is the most untruthful thing I have heard in a long time. No, I didn't steal it from any Catholic. I was aware, as I was studying this thing out, I was aware that Padre Pio had received a similar or same prophetic word. And I read that and I said, wow, God gave this revelation to Catholics or to some Catholics, the, some of the mystics. And to me, this is great. This is awesome. All that means to me is God is so awesome, so great, and he covers all the bases. So God gave the same message to the Catholic population back when ago. That's actually where it came from was several years ago within the realm of the Catholic um, congregations through a couple of these mystics. But then God in his mercy in this day and age realized that there was all kinds of other people out there, the Protestant world and the secular world and uh, the offshoots of the Protestant world, you know, like the cults and the heterodoxies and so on, that needed the same message because this event's going to affect the entire earth. It's going to affect every religion, every people group, every nationality, every tribe, kindred and tongue. And so God said, I have to get the word out to everybody. So then he started dropping it by revelation into the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, into the lives of Protestants and other offshoot religions. And even in the secular realm, I'm sure some secular people even received this prophetic word, but of course it was probably worded differently, but it was the same uh, reality. So don't throw that at me that, I took this from the Catholics. No, God gave it to a couple of Catholic mystics. And then it was pretty quiet for um, a decade, let me see, maybe four or five decades, pretty quiet. And then just in the last um, few years, God started dropping it by revelation into the mind and spirit of 